Okay, could you tell us a little bit, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Mark Wayne Mullen. I grew up in Adair County. Uh, that's where I met my wife, my whole family, including my wife's family is from there. We met in third grade, been together ever since. We got married when I was 19 years old and uh, it was been 15 years ago. The reason why I'm in this race is because I got fed up. We've been self-employed since we were 20 years old. We took over a, my father's uh, plumbing company. It had six employees and over half a million dollars of debt. 250 of it was immediate past due and uh, it, it was going to fail. My father said, if you want it, you can uh, you can take it. If not, I'm going to close the doors and make a living back home on the farm. Uh, today, that company employs over 120 people. We operate completely debt-free, but my number one competitor is this government and their involvement in our company. We spend over 40 cents on every dollar to comply with the mandates and regulations. And at some point, you got to throw your hands up and say, who's really representing us? Is... Uh, the government representing us or is our representatives representing us and it seems like more likely what happens is we get elected officials that go up there get lost and decide that they want to retain their job rather than represent us like they should. I'm going to serve six years and then I'm going to come home and raise my family on the same farm that I was raised on. How would you protect Social Security for today's seniors and strengthen it for future generations? Well, first of all, Social Security, I get so frustrated because it gets it gets clumped into uh, all the other entitlement programs out there and Social Security isn't an entitlement program. Social Security is a promise that the uh, country said that if we do our part they're going to do their part. What happens though is when we pay into it it ends up being used for special interest and if Social Security would simply stand alone, if we would pay the money in it would be able to stand by itself it would be solvent for not just the generation that's already using it, but for future generations too. How would you put Medicare on stronger financial ground and protect today's seniors and future retirees from the burden of rising health costs? Uh, first of all, repeal Obamacare. Uh, Obamacare has already taken over $700 billion out of Medicare. Once again, that's a perfect example of money that we paid into a program that's supposed to be there for us, and instead it's been taken out to fund pet projects. Medicare is there for future generations. It's supposed to be there for when the seniors get to a certain age. And if we continue to rob it and take money out of it and use it for unintended purposes, of course it's going to go bankrupt. We have to let it stand, just like Social Security, we got to let it stand alone. Keep the promise. The country said if we do our part, they'll do our, their part. We have done our part. Now the country needs to honor their promise. How would you help Americans build a financial nest egg for their retirement? Well, education, uh, understanding the life expectancy, understanding what it's going to take uh, to, um, uh, to invest, how much money they need to put back, and then also repeal some of this death tax and get rid of, of uh, capital gains. Uh, make it easier to invest. It, you know, if we, it, it, why should it have stipulations to build a vest in Roth IRAs? Uh, why should you have certain stipulations on how much you can invest as a business owner even into your own 401ks? If we invest for the future, then the government should reward us for that, not punish us. When we go in and start taking money back out and they start punishing us and charging us on that, what it does is it damages the money that we had set aside and it makes it harder for us to prepare for the future. And do you have any closing remarks you'd like to make? You know, I, granted, I'm, I'm fairly young. I'm only 35 years old. And it seems like my granddad has told me uh, over the last few years that, um, you know, this is the important, most important election, the most important election, the most important election they ever came up with. But this election that we're facing, November 6, I truly feel like is one of the greatest challenges this country is going to face. We're choosing the direction of the country, what type of country we want, we want to live in. And one thing that I would say, when we go to the polls and vote, we're not necessarily just voting for our future, but we're voting for the generations behind us for their future. We better make sure we get it right. Could you introduce yourself, please, and tell us why you're running for Congress? Yeah, I'm Rob Wallace, and I'm running for the second congressional district seat that Dan Bourne is stepping down from because I think folks uh, need a voice in Congress. Uh, that is more like theirs. I think we need uh, a voice for working men and women in Congress. Uh, right now that voice is not being heard and that's a source of great frustration all across the country. How would you protect Social Security for today's seniors and strengthen it for future generations? 
You know, I, I, I think this is a question about principle. Uh, I, I draw my principles from the Bible, and, and one of the things I read there, and one of the very important lessons that my mom and dad taught me was you keep promises that you make. Social Security and Medicare are promises that this government has made to people who have paid into the system their entire lives. And it's very important that we keep those promises. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's wrong when we start talking about the idea of privatizing Social Security or the idea that we need to turn Medicare into a voucher program. I'm against both of those, and I think it's very important that we keep the terms and promises uh, of these programs that have been supported and have been paid into for years uh, by our seniors and by people who've, who've been paying in by payroll deduction for most of their lives. How would you put Medicare on stronger financial ground and protect today's seniors and future retirees from the burden of rising health costs? Well, the, the question of medical care inflation is a very important question for the government and for uh, people as a whole. Uh, one of the problems we have is that medical care uh, inflation is rising at a much greater rate than inflation in the rest of the economy. And until we bring those two uh, inflation lines more in line with one another, we're going to continue to see uh, problems in making sure we have sufficient funding in Medicare. One of the points that we can uh, look at uh, without question is the cost of what's happening uh, in the emergency room. When you or I go to the emergency room with insurance coverage, uh, we pay an extravagant amount for simple supplies for the services that are rendered there because there may be others coming behind us who are not covered who are using the emergency room as their primary care physician. And by doing so, we're causing the cost to rise at a much greater rate than all other prices in the economy. When we get people to a point where they can use clinics as opposed to the emergency room as their primary care physician, then we can bring those two inflation lines more in line with one another. And by doing so, we put Medicare on a much more sound financial footing. If we will simply look at the fact that an ER visit is five or six times more expensive than a clinic visit, and we will incentivize people to use clinics as opposed to waiting till they're sick enough to have to go to the emergency room, then we'll move those two lines closer together, we'll reduce the cost of medical care, and we'll fix the actuarial problem in Medicare. How would you help Americans build a financial nest egg for their retirement? Well, the simple answer to that question is growth. We've got to grow the middle class in this country. And that means we have to continue to invest in people in this country. When we educate, people make more money. When they make more money, they spend more money. And we need to make sure there's money in the pockets of people who have to spend that money on a daily basis for the necessities of life and for the durable goods that are so important to all of us in this economy. In other words, we need to make sure that people are more highly educated, so they're making more money, so they're spending more money for those manufacturers' goods to create a demand at the manufacturing level. When that demand is created, manufacturers have to add jobs. And by adding jobs, we establish a cycle that makes sure that people are making more and more money, and everyone in the economy is doing better from bottom to top. Uh, in doing so, we make sure that, that uh, companies are growing and our savings are growing. And do you have a closing statement you'd like to make? I would simply say that in, in this race, you've got a choice between someone who has had a consistent position on Social Security and Medicare from the very first day of the race, and that's Rob Wallace. I've consistently said that these are programs that people have paid into for their entire lives, and as a result, uh, we need to keep our promise to them. My opponent in the race uh, has initially said we need to get government out of Social Security. Uh, now talks about government keeping its promise in Social Security. We just don't know where he really stands. And he doesn't speak to Medicare much at all. I want to be perfectly clear that I'm against the privatization of Social Security. I'm against turning Medicare into a voucher program. My opponent is supported by people with hundreds of thousands of dollars being paid into his campaign from people who want to do just that, who want to privatize Social Security and turn Medicare into a voucher program. We just can't trust him.